Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine, and I'm just here with a quick little visit. I wanted to show you um, what I finished doing with tulips. And then uh, I just wanted to share a few of the books that I found today at my Kirby book sale, my Kirby church book sale. Um, I didn't get very many today. I only got four. But I was being extra choosy because I really uh, do have a lot of books that that need work. <laughs> I really don't need more books, but I can't resist, especially because this little book sale doesn't go on during the winter. So I almost feel like a squirrel <laughs> getting my winter stash ready so that I can have some books to work on uh, throughout the throughout this long Canadian winter that's up ahead of us. So uh, yesterday I was working on a little ruffle in tulips with a couple of little squares of tulip fabric that uh, came in some happy mail. So I'm actually going to do a quick little flip through because I did a few things in here and now I can't remember <laughs> what I did. <laughs> and I haven't even had a martini yet. So, so let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> so, okay. Here's the little index card that uh, we did together. And that's that's on there good and tight now. So obviously, uh, three in one holds fabric very well. I made a I made a embellished rusty paper clip using some of the tulip fabric, uh, and I just finished the edge with uh, pinking shears. But I left it. I didn't um, rough this edge up the way I did on this. This book doesn't have a lot of distress ink, which is rare for me because I love my distress ink. <laughs> but I just felt like it, it didn't need a lot. It wasn't screaming at me to distress it. So, so that's, I did that with the fabric. I did this with the fabric. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Let's take a quick look. I'm not going to talk much about it because you can go and watch the original flip through. We did this yesterday. We added the little trick-or-treat bag and then just added an index card uh, for journaling on and used some sort of lime green po polka dot uh, ribbon, thin ribbon. Let's see if I did anything else here. No, no, no. Recipes for my mom's pumpkin pie and her pie crust. December. Yeah. Hmm. I know I did more. Mm -hmm. February, Valentine's Day. Oh, I um, March is St. Patrick's Day. Hold on, what do you want there? March is St. Patrick's Day, so um, this little page, I just put a little bit of green distress ink on that for it's St. Patty's Day, right? It, it, it needed something, especially I wanted to be able to stand out a bit from this plain back page. So, And then, of course, Robins. Where I live, March is usually when the Robins keep, uh, return. I added this little... This is from uh, Nancy at Wishes and Weeds that came in some happy mail. I, I kept one for me, and one is going to a new home. So, in a way, you're getting a Sunnyside journal... And there's a little bit of wishes and weeds in it. That's a uh, good value. <laughs> here we go. Oh, here. This is what I did. I put another ruffle on this page. So that's the tulip fabric from, again, from Nancy that came in Happy Mail. And then this teeny tiny little green rickrack is actually from Jacqueline. So there's a little bit of everybody in this journal now. So it's, it's nice that it hung around for a bit so that I could uh, play with it a little bit more. But I'm going to leave it be now because I do believe that once something is feeling good, you should just leave it be and let it uh, let the new owner take over. So I think that's I think that's it. I don't think I added any more to it. Hmm, nope, nope, nope. Oh, <laughs> I an index card, because I got that new stamp with tulips on it, and I thought, oh, you know what, I need to add that. 
because it's tulips. So that's what I did. I knew there was something else. So tulips has had a little bit of extra TLC uh, while she's still in my care until she goes to whoever her new owner is going to be. And I'm wondering if she's going to hang around in my Etsy shop till next spring when somebody m wants to make maybe have a creative gardening journal and keep track of what they're growing in their own garden. I think this would really make a cute gardening journal and certainly there's lots and lots of writing room in this book for you to keep track of what you're growing. As ever, tulips will come with uh, a goodie envelope. Uh, there's some, I included some tickets from St. John, New Brunswick when I went on my thrift haul. My thrift haul rama my husband and I, boy, those cab drivers made some good money <laughs> from us that day, and we're happy to help the economy out there. I've included lots of Lots of little ribbons and rickracks, and, and there's uh, there's going to be lots and lots of flower cards. Again, I think it would just make such a cute gardening journal. So I'll leave that be. That'll be for the new owner to explore what's in here. So there we go. I'm done with tulips. Let's take a look at the books that I got at my Kirby book sale. Um, they save books for me now. They, they're used to seeing me. I, I go once a month on the Saturdays that my husband works. I go up to the book sale. And uh, so they put things aside for me that they think maybe I'll like. And sometimes they hit the nail right on the head and sometimes it's not quite, they, they don't quite like the, the illustrations and that they're trying really hard. Fortunately, they're never offended if I say, oh yes, I love this one and no thank you to this one. They're wonderful about it. Like they did have a really nice little Beatrix Potter, one of the mini books put aside for me, but uh, I must have 30 Beatrix Potter books. <laughs> so I thanked them very kindly, but I said I don't need any more. So these books that I got, are um, were a dollar each. They sell no matter what the book is, no matter the size, big or small, it's a dollar each. This is one of the ones they saved for me. It's actually a really old copy of Alice in Wonderland. So I was really happy about that. It's in pretty sad shape. So this is going to take some TLC to, um, to bring Alice back to life. I forget what year it is. The, the previous little owner started coloring in some of the artwork and I don't know about you but I actually like that look whoever it was and they did a good job they 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 chose nice colors they did their best staying in in the lines and that's something all right let's see 1945 so it's really these um, pages feel quite fragile. I'm going to have to use um, the illustrations and put them onto other paper to keep them from falling apart. I'm, I'm afraid to, I don't want to waste any of the paper, but I have a feeling that if I bent it, it would just crack and break. So I'm not going to. And you can see here, it's already trying to come apart. So this isn't going to this isn't going to be hard at all to gut this book. And then I'll just reinforce it from the inside out. Uh, that's going to be fun. That's going to need some cleaning up. That's okay. i got a long winter ahead of me. You know me in red books. I love red. So I found this book here. Uh, Freehand and Perspective Drawing. And I just thought uh, it reminded me of the DIY book I'm working on right now. I love this. Let me see if I can bring it in. There you go. Um, it's from Denver, Colorado. Now, how on earth did a book from Denver, Colorado end up in Kirby, Ontario? <laughs> Who knows the way the world goes? So, again, this one's really falling apart. This is, I think, was it the 1930s? No, 1919. This is old, so this is actually 100 years old. And it's just about um, how to draw in perspective. So how to, um, you know, go from large to small to give distance in your artwork for artists. 
I remember learning about perspective in Mr. Ritchie's art class in high school. So this is going to be fun. That'll make a nice little journal. Now this one, I thought, is going to be interesting. First of all, I love the dust, dust jacket. And uh, as ever, I love red books. I had so much fun working on that great big huge illustrated, the complete illustrated home book. Um, if any of you remember from last spring. And I just thought, you know what, this is just another great big book. It's red, which I love. I like this. I don't, uh, I think they put it on themselves. I don't think this was done by an owner. I think this was the publisher put this on here. But I love it because it's got an artist's palette. It's got, um, hold on. It's got musical instruments. It's just all about the arts in general, this book. So it has um, quite a few interesting, like these end papers, aren't they cool? I forget what year it is. Oh, let's see here. 1937, hold on. There we go, 1937. There's a lot of unusual, isn't that pretty? A lot of unusual illustrations and, oh, all right, what's that? Complete list of every man's Okay, well, that's new. <laughs> I didn't know that was in there. Oh, it's a list of all the books that you should have if you've got a library of your own books. <laughs> Every man's library. Wow. All right, I didn't know that was there. Um, this book has a lot of unusual illustrations in it in, in quite nice, bright colors here and there. Let's see. Come on. Look here. So, oh there, that one's nice. So I think this one's going to be fun to work on, again, for the winter time. Uh, I'll gut that and put in a hollow back, a hidden hollow back spine, and make a nice big journal for somebody who's a big time uh, writer. This was interesting, the dust cover. I'm going to have to find something fun to do with it. It's double. I noticed when I was reading it, it says... Turn to the reverse side of this jacket for a folding map in colors showing the important events in the history of the arts. And I may simply just leave this as is and it will go to the new owner and they can just have fun with this themselves. Look at that. Is that amazing? That was inside the dust, dust jacket. So that's going to go uh, with it once it gets be done. All right, the arts, over you go. Here's the last thing, and I love when I can find these. I have one that I'm slowly working through. It's a reprint, don't, don't gasp too loud, it's not an original. <laughs> this is a, uh, a replica of a 1908 Sears Roebuck catalog. The nice thing about this one is, and it seems to be, there's a salutation inside, so it was a gift to someone, uh, and it's dated 1975. So it's quite old. And I like it because the pages are already a nice color. I won't have to um, tea or coffee dye them. They're already in a beautiful uh, off-white, sort of a newsprint color. So this was just, I think this was my favorite find up at the sale today. I was finding this for uh, $1. Really, really cool. So that's it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to get to work on uh, on DIY. You don't even know where you are, DIY. You got lost while I was talking to my books here. I'm just looking around the room trying to find it. Oh well, I'm going to get going. I'm going to go find DIY. Get to work on it. Um, it's raining outside. I've got homemade chicken soup simmering on my stove, so my house smells really good right now. <laughs> so it's cold and damp out there, but it's warm and uh, chickeny <laughs> in here. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, take care. We'll talk soon. Bye.